Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a MySQL database server and uh, I'm going to be putting that on my AuthServe server here uh, because I just figured this authentication server isn't really going to get a whole lot of use all the time so uh, I'm going to put that database server on there and uh, you know make it actually a little bit more useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the database server on AuthServe and then what we're going to be doing later is we're going to be putting a media wiki and we're going to be putting that on this web server here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have the MySQL server on AuthServe and then we're also going to be setting up a client. One client you can set up a bunch of clients but uh, we're just going to set up the one on WebServe so we can actually access the database remotely. So we'll get into it and I'll walk you through it as I go. First thing you need to do is it's a group of packages. I'm on CentOS 6.6, .6, so you don't necessarily need the group of packages. I just do it because it's a little bit more convenient. So I just did a less there and just show you what we're going to do, what package we're going to install. Okay, so database client and database server. We're going to do the database server on this one and the client on the web server. So we're going to go yum group install mysql. Okay, let it go through and do its thing. Okay, it shouldn't take that long. And uh, one thing we're going to have to do right after this is let's just make it persistent right away because then if we restart, uh, it'll start up automatically. And that's what you want, especially with a database server because the uh, web server is going to be contacting it and updating it and, and drawing data from it. So we're going to go check config. We're going to say level three because we're only on run level three here mysql d okay it's not mysql but you have that daemon d at the end of that and we're going to say on okay next thing we're going to do let's start it up now service start mysql d start all right and it's going to give you a couple things to uh, do after this now it says you can do you can just create a root user or a, a root password right away and just kind of get into it that way. This is alternatively you can run the secure installation. We're going to do that. So we're going to say mysql underscore secure installation. Gives you a couple more things, uh, a couple more options that you might not, uh, you might kind of gloss over if you just do create the root user. So there is no current password. We're going to set it, yes. And we're just going to add that new password. Remove anonymous users, yeah, you want to do that. If I'm going too fast, just pause it and read through these paragraphs. And disable, disallow root login remotely. Uh, we're going to say yes, that's a security thing. And we're going to be creating, with root, we're going to be creating the databases. But for the, uh, for the uh, tables and manipulation of each database, we're going to be just using uh, other users. And that makes it a little more secure. So we're going to say disable root login remotely, yes. Remove the test database, yeah, you never use that anyways. And reload it, there you go. Okay, so next thing what we're going to do is we're going to go into MySQL. Now this is on the local host, so we're going to say MySQL user root p and just leave it like that. If you wanted to, if you had the password, you could do it right there without a uh, space and then that would, uh, it would take your password there or you just leave it. So we're on the local host so you don't need to specify where it is. And we'll just do that. Alright, so we're on the MySQL command line. Not going to talk too much about stuff here. What I am going to do first is create database and I'm just going to call it media. Semicolons at the end of all your SQL statements. Okay, and uh, after that let's create a user. Now this user we're going to be logging in remotely from that web serve machine. So we're going to say create user, and I'm just going to say user1 at. Now the percentage sign, that's your wildcard. So if I had this, that would be, it would be allow connections of user1 from anywhere, no matter the IP, no matter where it's coming from. An alternative, if you have a domain, let's say mine is local net, I could do that. And that would allow like, uh, you know, mail serve, file serve, auth serve anybody with on the in the local net domain would be able to connect to that uh, you could even be as granular as you wanted to say web serve dot local net but uh, what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do it as a percentage sign just because uh, I'm then I'll be able to access it from my fedora box on which 
all the stuff is running on top of if I really wanted to. So uh, your choice there, but uh, you know there's security implications for all these things. Uh, identified, that's the uh, password. Okay, bad password. Uh, you can update it and change it after the fact, but uh, you know that's where you would put your password in. And remember, semicolons. Okay. Next thing, we're going to grant privileges on this so that it can be you can actually do stuff with it. So I'm going to say grant all on, and remember we yeah we created the database media if you look up there. So we're going to say media dot star. So this means that you're going to grant all privileges on the stars on the media database, and then dot star. The star is all the tables in that media database. Okay, then we're going to say to user1 at and then we're just going to do the same thing percentage sign okay do that uh, if there's an error in any of your stuff instead of the query okay well you'll get something that says you know some kind of error it might point you uh, closely into the direction of where that might be located so it uh, it does come in a little bit of handy so next thing we're going to do is we're going to exit out of this. So we have our user and we have our uh, permissions and we're going to be working on the media database there. Okay, so we exit. Uh, I guess you don't need the uh, semicolon after that, but uh, pretty much SQL statements, all of them, you need a semicolon after, the, uh, after them. Next thing we need to do is we're going to open up. Well, I'm going to install it real quick and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so uh, we need to create a firewall rule that's going to allow remote connections to that MySQL database. So that's all I'm doing here. Uh, and the system config firewall, uh, you can do a TUI, text user interface, that's what I'm going to be doing. And it's just, uh, it's convenient, it's quick, and it's easy to uh, make the firewall rule. Okay, so let's get into that. And let's just go to customize. Now it's not in here so you need to go forward and you need to add and the protocol uh, port range is going to be 3306 that's your MySQL and TCP say so, okay and then it's a little strange going going through this like it doesn't uh, it doesn't really acknowledge what you did but it's there you can see it 3306 is what you want I'm going to close it okay and then it's going to write it again Okay, so after that, we should be good to go. And it's running. We should be good to go with the MySQL database server. So what we just did, we set up a MySQL database server. Now what we need to do is on the web server, we're going to create a client so it can connect to that database server. Same thing, we're going to go yum group list and just less it out because I can't scroll up and down on this. And it's going to be the same thing. MySQL, the group is going to be MySQL database server. And uh, this is taking a little bit longer, but no worries there. Let's just get to it. All right. So we're going to say yum group install. Let's just Y because group install MySQL database client. Okay. So we're doing the client this time. Let it do its thing. Install all the stuff that it needs to install. And after that, one thing, there's no service that you need to make persistent or turn on for the client. So just be aware of that. Okay. All right. Good to go. And uh, let me just show you. We'll go to cd etc rc.d init d. And we'll just ls. And if you look, there is no MySQL D on there. All right. Remember, this is a client. So after this, all we are going to do is just let's go and try to connect. So the command MySQL dash H is the host. Okay. Auth serve dot local net. All right. So remember the auth serve. The local net is my domain. U is user. Yep. Nope, S E R one and P. We're going to leave that as a password. We're going to say password, whatever that password is going to be. And right there you can see that we did just 
enter into that uh, database. So let's go show databases. Oh, let's uh, make it official. Show the, it doesn't matter caps lock or any of that. It's just every every book that you have has you doing it in caps lock, and it kind of uh, you're able to maybe pick out more of what the command is about with this if you don't have uh, if you don't have text highlighting here. So show show databases okay media that's what we have so we're just gonna do a real quick one we're gonna say use media Oop. okay hold on use media access denied okay uh, let's hold on one second here okay uh, a good point here too now like I said if you're uh, looking at a MySQL book or anything, it's all in, uh, you know, the, the keywords are in caps and other things. Well, if you look at what I did, it is, uh, you know, whether it's uppercase or lowercase, it does make a difference because the database is lowercase media. Uppercase media, well, there is none, but it says access denied because I only have access to that lowercase media. And here, I'm just going to do this lowercase, but I'm going to say create table uh, testing, and then we're going to say column one int column two uh, let's just say var char 20 okay and we're good to go right there so just see uh, we created a table so let's just say show tables and testing right there okay show tables alright so I think that's probably a preference if uh, if you're using capital letters or not capital letters for your keywords but uh, that's like I said that's up to you and uh, but you can see there we did create and remember we are on that web server virtual machine so we just created a uh, database or a table on that media database remotely let me just show databases again okay and I'm gonna try to use information schema and this is the last thing I'll do so use information schema we should get an error database changed Okay, well, anyways, let's see. Uh -huh. Show tables. Okay, let's just say drop views. Okay, let's say drop. Hold on. I want to get to the point where it says that you don't have access, you don't have privileges for that. Yeah, see that? Access denied. Okay, so that was the whole point there. I guess you can actually see some of these things, and this is that information schema, but uh, it says access uh, denied. Okay, but let me go and let's uh, say use media, all right, and show tables. See how I'm using that capitals interchangeably? I don't know. Okay, now let's go drop, drop table testing, and it should work, and it worked. Now show tables and empty set. So you see that, uh, but that's because we granted only for the media database. So you can create tables, you can drop tables, update all that stuff, but only in that media database. Okay, so. Uh, in this video, what we did, we created on the AuthServe machine, we created the uh, MySQL database server, and then on the web server here, we connected with that MySQL client, and uh, just showing you how some of the permissions worked on that. Okay, and uh, that's all I had for this video, so stay tuned for future videos.